dear venerable sisters and brothers, Tamma friends. Today is our eighth day, I think, and uh, time is allocated for Dhamma discussions. Accordingly, there are some written questions. I, I wish to proceed, and meanwhile, if there are any questions or any statements, <clears throat> you will are welcome to participate the, uh, the Dhamma discussion. Uh, dear Bhante, Tetuan Sarnai, there are times when words and actions irritate, we should not get irri- There are times when words and actions irritate us, we should not get irritated. Please tell us uh, many ways of not getting irritated. Mm, the explanation is not enough uh, to deal the case. Okay, there are times when words and actions irritate us, we should not get irritated. Please tell us many ways of not getting irritated. So these uh, words and actions coming from you or coming to you is not being given. So there are some words and actions coming from outside irritating us and sometimes some words and action of us, the uh, one's own, that is also irritating us. So uh, that is not being clear. It is not clear. Uh, we should not get irritated. This is just a, a how do you call uh, ethical statement. But if you are getting irritated, you are getting irritated. That is the reality. Please tell us uh, tell us many ways of not getting irritated. Uh, to the last sentence, we can say Buddha has given the general guidelines for Venerable Rahula, the young Samanera, uh, before words are being expressed before the action are being performed, think twice. That is the way. Pachavekita, Pachavekita, Bhasitabam, Pachavekita, Pachavekita, Khatabam. Reflect beforehand. So that is the way. So therefore, uh, one must slow down the process with more observation and less commitment. Uh, that is the way we have to, we can uh, reduce, uh, but uh, they, are, they are not very quick and uh, assured method, but definitely it will reduce the amount of irritation. So therefore one has to be patient while uh, practicing it. But I would recommend uh, be mindful together with, then it will be more organic, more uh, immediate. So therefore while being mindful, try to slow down and reflect before uh, uttering words and performing actions. Uh, Bhante, if somebody possesses psychic power, is it necessary that he, she has reached certain stage of sainthood? Uh, for me, the psychic people has to send to the asylum. That is what my understanding. All these psychic, I am, may, I, maybe I am too dramatic, too drastic, too critical and kind of thing. Oh, because for my, now I am 60 years old. I have seen so much of psychic, psychic people. Uh, so I think they are, they are more, more, how do you call this, uh, asylums are for that. And uh, when there was, a, when the first time uh, Sigmund Freud came out with this psychoanalysis, there had been a cartoon telling that uh, Sigmund Freud is the teacher, the master, the psych- psychiatrist, and there's a wall picture of the, his master's photo that is also Sigmund Freud, patient also Sigmund Freud. So that is the way they presented. So therefore, and he himself told, if the, the, if someone becoming an artist, that's a kind of a psychological aberration. That is why he became an artist. If someone is going to be a be engineer, that's also kind of aberration. And he has not given what aberration made the psychiatrist. Psychiatry is also just another aberration and that kind of thing. And uh, there's a one book in Sri Lanka and uh, Sarachandra, he started the book telling, there are once upon a time there were no psychiatrists. So no psychological patients. And then he is starting the book and analyzing the, all the psychiatric aberration in the Bodhisattva Charita, Bodhisattva characteristics. And so some Buddhist people are so uh, vehemently critical it. 
I mean, that is the way his presentation. So the psychic power, at the, from the beginning, I had my own doubts. Because these people can't walk, uh, work on the ground and walk on the gra- land, that is why they are thinking about the psychiatry. The psychic power. They don't know how to live in the rational way, so they are making you psychiatry. I am usually not confronting that kind of people. It is good for both the sides, I think. So therefore, I, 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 I am not uh, thinking with for them. That does not indicate there is no such a case like psychic powers. There is. There is a respectable area. But these commercialized things, so you have to be careful. Venerable Bhanti, I have heard that there are suttas where the Buddha refers to the origin of the universe and the beings. Could you please let us know the name of few such suttas? Sattva Suryukamana Sutta and Sattva Suryukamana is very famous. It is about the end of the world and the rising of the world, of the world system. Yet another sutta, Agganya Sutta, these are the two suttas. Uh, uh, I, can't, I can't remember. Uh, Sattva Suryukamana may be in the Sang- Sangyutta Nikaya. Uh, Aganya Sutta is a fairly long one. It is in Jika Nikaya. Uh, the beginning and the end uh, of the u- uh, world systems, universe of uh, galaxies and universal systems is being uh, gradually exposed. General Bhante, at times in my uh, practice, I go through moments of intense uh, shaking. Uh, it continues for a while and uh, then stops. Am I experiencing the AI element? Uh, one attribution is the AI element. The other one is uh, the, there may be some other causes also. Uh, so therefore, if someone can see the movement, the the shaking movement, irrespective of the bodily patterns attributing to your body, uh, the, that then you are see the natural characteristics of the AI element without attributing to the localizing to your body. For example, if your hand is moving or whole body is moving, uh, not attributing the bodily parts, but just see the mere action of movement in that if under such circumstances, definitely you can see the element of air. Uh, during walking, meditation, if you experience a magnetic pull, is it uh, quite difficult to, it is, uh, it is quite difficult to continue walking and you lose your balance. Should I stop uh, walking at that stage and go to sitting meditation? Uh, better not Go for sitting meditation, you can stand still or you can go to the corner and sit for one or two minutes to see this uh, situation uh, instead of going and sitting directly. So therefore, when the problem arising at the walking meditation, it must end with the walking meditation rather than changing the posture. So sometimes the swaying can happen, sometimes this kind of uh, the benumbing or magnetic pull can happen. When that thing happens, if it is bearable, you continue. Unbearable, you go and sit. Therefore, usually at the end of the walking path, always you have a uh, sitting chair. Uh, that is a part and partial of the traditional uh, walking paths. Uh, dear Venerable Manti, for, for walking meditation, is it okay to use uh, tiled floor, cement floor, or grass? in absence of the sand bed. Please recommend possible alternative. Um, let say it is tile flow and the cement flow is negative power. So it is pulling all the heat from your the body and the problem regard is related to the flame can be aggravated, specifically in the cold season and the rainy season. Uh, but in the hot time, it may be comfortable. Uh, the In between the cement flow and the the sand, uh, the Koya mattress, which is only you find in Sri Lanka, very difficult to get in the other places. Grass also good uh, if it is well trimmed and the best is the sand. So specifically in atmosphere like here, 
where it is always shady and uh, too humid, uh, you must avoid as much as possible the tile floor and the cement floor. But unavoidable circumstances, under unavoidable circumstances, you can wear a, a pair of socks and then cut off the situation. But the disadvantage is too flat, too artificial, but uh, rugged soil or, or sand or this uh, choirmetrus is giving this uh, massaging, the reflexology massaging. So that is more uh, mobilizing, mobilizing more energy than this flat flow. Venerable sir, why is it important that one use the same place and same time to meditate, that is to get the same vibration. So wherever uh, the place being seasoned, uh, there's a kind of a good vibration, good vibes they call in America. And if you are sitting with the well-trained meditators, when you go into the group, you feel. If you go to a seasoned place, there also you feel. So beginners always must try to find that kind of a conducive conditions. So therefore, if you are training in your house, uh, you must be sensitive to which direction, which place, which time, which posture. They are really going to give a good uh, starting for the meditation. So later, once you develop a certain amount of wherever you go, you can get, you know how to earn it. But at the beginning, this is to be promoted. What is the difference between the Chullo Sota Panna and Sota Panna? Chullo Sota Panna is a, is a rehearsal. Or in a sense, it is an indication that you can achieve in this very life, but uh, not going to the uh, full-fledged. Sota Panna is the authentic or real uh, fruit, fruit no, path and fusion knowledge. If one meets a Sota Panna person, can you recognize him? Uh, very difficult, very difficult unless he is having his address card telling the time Sotapan. So I, I don't know how much of you are going to print your address card soon. So even behind the Buddha, people have traveled and without knowing that he is the Buddha. So what about the Sotapan? Jiya uh, Bhante, it is uh, is the experience of piti and sukha and uh, essential and absolutely necessary stage in the vipassana uh, progression path. There is no such, um, uh, what you call, uh, absolutely necessary essential path. Uh, this is the general, uh, standard path. Some people skip them, skip some stages. Some people specialize some stages, so therefore there may be uh, differences according to the individual characteristics. Uh, but uh, Pichi Sukha is happening, uh, the, uh, some people have, having so much of past merits and uh, they have done enough uh, skillfulness or merits so they can have a, a Sukha Patisa, uh, Kippa Binya Sukha Patipada. Sukha Patipada means that on the path, not much rugged, it's smooth. Some other people, it is not so. So whatever it may be, it's applicable till you come to the fruition, path knowledge, and once beyond that, no discrimination, up to the path and fruition knowledge, these things matter, and it is also changing from one person to one person. And the other one also, this PT and Sukha, for the first time you are applying and you are experiencing, it is hilarious, it is unbearable. But when you go to the second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, it is. It become a second nature, not much of a uh, big hiatus. In spite of uh, intense practice of uh, mindfulness, if their uh, factors are not clearly arising, what could be the other underlying reason for the absence? In spite of intense practice of mindfulness, if they are, if these factors are not clearly arising, what could be the other underlying reasons for their absence? Not pointed. In spite of intense practice of mindfulness, if these factors are not 
clearly arising. These factors is not been defined, so very difficult to understand the question. What could be the other underlying reason for their absence? Uh, in spite of the intense practice, the mindfulness, if these speech factors are not clearly arising, what could be the other underlying reason for their absence? Uh, very difficult to say. Piti is uh, uh, given as the antidote for the uh, hatred and uh, doubts. When there's a, the five hindrances, uh, sensuous desire, hatred, sloth and topper, and remorse and the excitement and the doubts. So instead of uh, hatred, PT is the counterpart. PT is the antidote. Whenever the PT happens, no hatred can happen. Whenever the, the, instead of doubt, the sukha arises. So, those who are uh, more hindrance or impeded, uh, blocked by hatred, whenever it is overcome, huge amount of PT can come. But not for the, uh, the people, those who have no much of hatred, so they are counterbalance. Uh, these they are uh, PT and Sukha are uh, mental uh, jhanic factors. Uh, five hindrances, whenever they are overcoming by each other, uh, the balance of uh, factors shifting from the rupa vachara to kama kama vachara to rupa vachara mental state i mean entering into the jhana happens so according to their balances in their individual uh, character traits these pichi sukha play accordingly uh, is it all the same possible for the yogi to uh, progress towards the goal without encountering these elements in the significant proportions uh, that depends on the personality trait, that depends on their character traits. So therefore, some people uh, experience in, in a very significant way, some other will not uh, be to the same extent. Uh, what should a lay person do if he, she sees a monk, nun, acting, speaking, practicing in the wrong way? Uh, in ways lead to greed, uh, superstitious, uh, magic, etc. So th that <coughs> if it is uh, related to you out of compassion and out of uh, sharing ideas, you can try. Uh, but under such circumstances, there's a lot of myth uh, communication can take place. So therefore one has to be very careful, unless otherwise the other person come and invite you to do something like that. Uh, going to advise them, going to uh, indicate them, the other party feel like forking the fingers into my psychologies. Why should you come and tell me like that? So therefore, unless otherwise you have a special necessity, unless otherwise you have an invitation, uh, better not to. And the other, the meanwhile, you have to keep on observing the thing to see whether actually he or she is performing with the greed or superstitious or magic. Uh, because uh, sometimes the monks and nuns do this kind of thing to get rid of lay people. Very easy way. They behave like a fool. So they won't come. This is a very tricky place. They, they completely do that other person will misunderstand and they will say, what a nonsense that she, oh, that monk and that nun is so the minuous and they are these kind of things like. So they act in such a way so that there won't be much of a following up and acquaintance so they can do. There are a few cases during the time of Anuradhapura. The king was so devoted and he used to go and pay respect to the particular monk and everyone then understand that monk is Arhant. So they are onward, he has no peace of mind. So much of appointments and people come and... So he used to be uh, misty, uh, the, uh, how do you call, uh, mislead the king by a foolish action. action. So ultimately the king become upset and, every, and then onward he can have his own time peace of mind. So therefore they play tricks. 
so they so you are really getting into the trick play into the trick so therefore observe again and again whether that particular person is doing it or happening or whether it is backed by greed superstition so this thing you have to observe number of times and more than that mind your own business most venerable bante when the breath disappeared there there is no feeling or other sensation the essential objects to no perception no thought not even conscious for a while there are no pain no pleasure no dukkha again when breathing start all these are appeared all dukkha comes after then if so appearing the breath one after one continuously following other aggregates vidna sanya sankhar vijnana is that uh, jati pi dukkha so this is uh, the the buddha attributed he go a little deep he says not the appearing of the breath but the the perception of the breath breath and the perception of the breath is two things sometimes breath is there you can't perceive sometimes you can perceive but it is not the breath likewise the rupa and rupa sanya the rupa is the one what we call the concrete earth element air element kind of thing but the perception the the nimitta or sign made out of air element and kind of thing is a different thing but our mind can read the concrete matter instead we can read only the signs can only see only the perception so when the perception disappeared you take it as disappearance of the concrete matter when the perception appear it you feel like it is a concrete matter appearing that is what it happens in the dreams the conception appearing and then you feel like you are with the real matter this is not the appearing of the real matter but it's appearance of the perception in the dream world so ultimately you you get moved and you get ang- uh, angry and desire everything can arise but it is not due to matter but it is due to the perception of the matter and that is exactly what happens in the day to day activities even if you feel you touch it it is not the matter the concrete matter matters only the perception so you have to understand the thing and the shadow our mind can't read our mind has nothing to do with the matter it need uh, its language is the perception so ultimately perception uh, represent the matter so you misunderstand representative to the origin so that uh, that is the way are the communication is subset in our languages uh, when we say what is the meaning of papancha and how does it affect the meditation and papancha is usually in the traditional way it says uh, three uh, roots to proliferate in untrained mind uh, roots are the desire uh, conceit and the ego this ego uh, ego idea and out of that only mind is keep on proliferating uh, so the proliferation itself is known as papancha and uh, more than this uh, traditional interpretation traditional interpretation prapancha means pervading the spreading uh, and uh, uh, but when the mahayana tradition it has been given more nuances more shades of meaning uh, but today's talk will be taking this subject little in detail so i will take mark this um, uh, keep this question uh, for the and the elaboration you you can expect in the talks today uh, dear venerable sir you have spoken of the fearlessness of abhay and abhay dana does one give fearlessness to absolute acceptance of others just as they are uh, please advise on how to give abhay dana uh, the buddha has mentioned uh, as far as the aryans are concerned uh, panatipata bhikkhave mahadanam agadanam aryasya vinaye that means whenever you are abstaining from killing or this is the generosity of the fearlessness to the other party that is the only generous thing the aryans are really concerned and uh, abstaining from stealing also a generous thing or generosity 
or giving fearlessness to the owner, that is the thing the Aryans or the Seka, usually Aryans are performing. And a way, uh, abstaining from mis- sexual misconduct, abstaining from uh, verbal misconduct, abstaining from uh, liquor and intoxicants, all these five are known as uh, giving of fearlessness. So, Sila is the, the giving of fearlessness. Uh, this is the esteemed thing. This is the Aryans are uh, esteemed best uh, more than giving material. They, they share fearlessness, the giving fearlessness. So therefore, any person uh, uh, the giving uh, or abstaining from killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, verbal misdeeds and the uh, intoxicants, this is the best you can give to the society. Uh, what in which you live. Uh, dear Venerable Sir, I continue to have difficulty staying in my primary object. My mind keeps going back to the problems at home that may affect my ability to progress on my path. Thinking, remembering, worrying. I am finding it difficult to break this habit. In addition to practice, keep trying. Are there any more techniques, way to help overcome this uh, hindrance? It is funny when you come here to the meditation after getting us so much of rare chance. Think about the home. When you go back home again, think about how can go to the meditation center. This is the way. And while we are at home, always thinking, how can I get my registration? Can may I get the chance? And always thinking about the meditation. Once they come here, think about what is happening in there. So therefore, the the cow eating in this bank, see across the uh, river, and see the cow in the other show on a very real green. It is eating like grazing, like anything. But when it looked down, it is here and there, one or two pieces of green blades are there, but this green is no good. But the cow in the other show can see, I am in such a barren place, the other cow, she is in a very nice green. So this is time always, other show is better than this one. So when you come here, it happens. And the best thing is, you have to follow the basic instruction given, you sit comfortably, don't try to go for a primary object. Let the primary object to happen. If it is not so, see what is happening. That's it. If you are going to chase, then only this thinking is a problem. If the thinking is the what is going to happen, you just not thinking, thinking, thinking. So therefore the basic instructions. Uh, the, you have to listen again, listen carefully, and uh, don't try to maximize Primary object, instead try to maximize mindfulness with the help of whatever the object. There is a Rahula type type situation, imagining at home, if the Buddha were to have today, would he advise do a small abhinikmana, if you can't do a maha abhinikmana, or would you, would he give some other advice? not clear, there is a Rahula type situation emerging at home. If the Buddha were to be here today, would he advise, do a small Abhinikama, that renunciation, if you can't do a Maha Abhinikama, or would he give some other advice, much merit? I can't get the real picture. Can anyone read the question? I can read it, but I mean, I can understand the question. But what does this mean by the Mahabhinikama, big renunciation? Yeah. So the, the small Abhinikama means that small renunciation compared to the big renunciation. What is the small and big? No, I am asking that the, the, from the... Big one is Abhinikama. So we leave aside the, the example of the Buddha. He's asking two options, small renunciation and big renunciation. What does it mean? So, but, yeah. So that is why that easy, so they to go for a small abhinikamana. That is a gradual process. 
So under any circumstances that is safe. And then you will get a chance for big up in Ikkamana if it is the circumstances are good. I mean, that is a straight answer. You have two options and start with the small one. And if it is okay and still the mind is in the same mood and if you get the chance, jump ahead. So therefore, easily it is advisable to go for the minor type and then to the bigger type. I am a radical type, it's waiting, nothing to worry. You can do with the conventional type and still the time for, still the, the radical type is awaiting. So that, that is, the, as far as if you think the, the hook is outside, the attraction is outside, so much of the question. It is Buddha says from in. It is, a, the attraction is from within you. It is not the child or the house or the household life. So you have to understand that uh, rather than attributing to the external cause. So in the external cause, you do in the, uh, the how to call it, gradual process. Keep on doing it. What happens is, within that, your immunity is increasing. So therefore, first, uh, small renunciation, and then still reconsideration, and then go for two, three, that kind of thing, and ultimately, pick one. Sometimes doing something which has uh, utility value may mean not minding one's own business. How does one decide whether to go get involved or not, uh, that is decided because of the invitation, because of the necessity, the need. When the need happens, anukampa means that you are being prompted by your uh, sympathy. So then you do. Not by the uh, initiative. You are not, uh, um, how do you call, uh, initiate by yourself. You are not... Uh, start thinking or creative, but the sympathy happens, you do. If the other person is asking, you do. Otherwise, you go for the utility value. Uh, Vendual Bhante, could you kindly explain how such a large number of lay people attain Arahanship by listening to one sutta in the Buddha's time? Why is it so difficult in spite of many years of striving continuously and generally nowadays that it that it seems so impossible. Uh, the early part is a kind of observation the, the person is writing, but you have to understand the Buddha has walked so much of miles for to make one person sotapan. She has start walking miles, and then only he is achieving. And the first Dhamma Chakka Pavatana Sutta, only one person became sotapan. That's a big achievement for the Buddha, so he started the Udana, Anyasi Vatabho Kondanyu, Anyasi Vatabho Kondanyu, so uh, the measurement of the, the results, it is, uh, we think from the, the picture now we have with to the suttas, uh, there are a lot, but in the uh, case of Super Buddha Kutti and others, a lot of people are listening to them, eh? when the beggar came and sit behind, Ultimately, that beggar is the only one who got the Dhamma and Buddha is searching. All the others are just sitting for the sake of sitting, not listening. The casual beggar is the one who understood. So that indicates it is not a wholesale business, it is always retail business. Sometimes it goes in the wholesale in the Christmas time. (laughs) (laughs) Not totally. Venerable uh, Vansi, during yesterday's talk, you mentioned the concept of rejecting the idea of male and female. Is it one way to understand anatta? So, this is, of course, the way to understand the humanity. When you understand the humanity, your patriotism, your gender base, your class base, your uh, the, the status base, all these things become, the, the how do you call, um, useless. How much it is making uh, problems among the uh, individuals? So if you can just go to the humanity, I mean, you you can really uh, share with the other people. But we can't see because we are always, we are in the tinted glasses, uh, the patriotism, the class and the caste and all the kind of thing. So ultimately you see <coughs> amount of uh, the misunderstanding, ill-treating of the even the human beings, Due to very simple uh, character, uh, when I was in the farm, uh, it happened as to uh, 
recruit a person, some of my junior members came and he has, uh, we wanted to have a person with the horticulture. Specialization is horticulture. We all are agricultural graduates. And he has done uh, the soil science or food science as a specialization. So my idea was to reject him because his specialization is not horticulture. But luckily that day my professor was there on the consultant basis. He told, mind you, he has the basic degree of agriculture. So he's qualified. Having a food science is not a disqualification, it's an additional qualification, so you have no right to reject the application. You understand the point? We are looking at the tiny, tiny details and we don't feel the basic degree or that we are human. So ultimately you are so camouflaged, ultimately you take unhuman, brutal decisions, you can't see the other psychology because of the patriarchy. For the cars. So Buddha was so humiliated and he tried his best to keep up the human nature, the humanity. So therefore, no, no, the, the, any other teacher come up to that because all other talking about their own creed, their own greed, the caste and kind of thing. So Buddha is the only one see through it and he tried his best, at least the Buddhists. At least the Buddhist not to be fundamentalist. Buddhists have no rights to be fundamentalist because they, they, our teacher is Buddha. Buddha is asking us to have a broad-minded uh, humanity. So even without losing the Atta concept, you will feel sharing with the other fellow beings. Venerable say, can you kindly explain mudita or sympathetic uh, gladness so this is uh, appreciation of the other's achievement. It says when the mother and the father is looking at looking up at the upbringing while the upbringing children while it is growing. At the beginning, you must have metta to give the whole protection, the food, and all the kind of thing. Whenever the child fallen sick, you have to have karuna uh, to give uh, sympathy. When the child, when the boy or a girl. Uh, Running with the boyfriend or girlfriend, parent has to be mudita. I mean, they are minding their own luck, uh, this thing, and uh, don't say that uh, you are losing attention to me and going to go with the boyfriend and the girlfriend, but instead you have to have mudita, that uh, your own, uh, that they are on selection, and whenever they get a good job and go abroad and kind of thing, they, ta-ta, bye-bye. That is what the mudita is. When the breath disappeared, no other feeling or other other is not there. Someone can stay for a long time without any distri- uh, disturbances. If he died while he was in such a situation, what will be the next birth? I think he was not dying, next thought moment also will be undisturbed. But if he's going to die, uh, so wait and see. Because under, when, under such circumstances you are entertaining this kind of doubts, entertaining this kind of prolific thinking. So what, uh, what, uh, what a pricking. So when such a thing happened, uh, let the mind to be imbibed in that situation. Don't ask this kind of question. Because this is uh, the, you are questioning. That is called prapanchakala yutu netsthana prapanchakarana. That uh, place where you should not proliferate the thoughts, you are proliferating. And it, it, is, a, it is a kind of a unwanted disturbance, turbulent. Don't, don't ask this kind of thing. And this, the, that uh, promoting... The turbulence, the profi- prolif- prolific uh, mental proliferation, and uh, if it is happening, let the, the karma and the karma theory, uh, good begets good and the bad begets bad, to decide what the contribution or what the, anything you do by rationalizing it. Nothing to promote that kind of thing. Vendor Bhante, in your talks over the last few days, you mentioned that it is not possible to describe in words, when the uh, breath becomes subtle and uh, unpersuable. I am, am I correct to understand that if your person saying in the continuum of awareness, then 
that person would not generate any karmic collision. Uh, first and the second not connected, but the latter part is correct. Uh, say if a person says in the continuum of the awareness, then uh, that person would not gener- uh, generate any karmic pollution. That is clear. That is why when the thought disappearance, not asking that kind of question. Asking means that you are creating volition. Asking means you are thinking. Asking means you are giving the turbulent or the unturbulent water. So if you are just entertain that no volition, no fabrication, no will, that is the contribution you have to do. So there won't be any repercussion. There won't be any backlash. And uh, that is the way you have to uh, facilitate it, but it is not nothing related with the uh, undescribable situation. Even though it is undescribable, uh, the benefits are there. So today we have a committee meeting. So supposed to have one thirty. So I got little more time. So I am not asking any more any more questions. This is the end of all written questions. So we are stopping ten minutes short of the normal uh, the discussion. Thank you for participation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.